Hello, I'm Leslie Banks for GalsGuide.com. Today I'm talking with Christine Benz, Director of Personal Finance for Morningstar and the author of 30 Minute Money Solutions, a step-by-step -step guide to managing your finances. Today we're going to talk about prioritizing debt and investing. How do you save for the future and also manage your current financial obligations? Christine, thanks for being here today. Leslie, great to be here. Well, I thought today we could talk about all the obligations that you have when you're at first out of college. You've got your college loan debt to consider, perhaps a car loan, you've got credit card debt, and then you're faced with a decision, do you invest or not in your company's 401k? It's a lot for a young woman to think about, yeah. and it's hard sometimes to prioritize. So I thought maybe we could talk today about how to make that prioritization in terms of your financial goals. Yeah, it's, it's a multitasking nightmare, really. <laughs> and what I see is that a lot of people just kind of wing it. They don't really anchor that decision-making the numbers. So when I think about the key priorities, and these are challenges and, and financial priorities that a lot of young women are facing, um, one would be paying down credit card debt. And if you have credit card debt, it really probably is goal number one versus tackling other opportunities um, because you're going to be hard pressed to out earn that interest rate on any sort of investment. So if you've got credit card debt, you probably want to channel the lion's share of any financial resources toward getting that down. Mm -hmm. And then simultaneously, and so you, you can't do one or the other, simultaneously you want to think about building an emergency fund. Mm -hmm. And the key reason for that is that you don't want to have to dig yourself into even worse right. credit card debt if some emergency arises like a car repair or something like that. You don't want to have to put that on plastic. So right. you want to be simultaneously building up an emergency fund. And then also, if you are in a company retirement plan, you're eligible to contribute to it, and your company's matching you on some portion of that contribution, yeah. you want to be trying to put at least as much into that plan that you need to to earn that match. Mm -hmm. So those are three things that um, if any of those situations apply to you, plan on channeling your financial resources there before moving on to other categories. In your column last week on galsguide.com, you talked about prioritizing your finances, making the decision based on the numbers, which I thought was great advice. Um, how do you prioritize what or categorize good debt versus bad debt? Can you talk about that a little bit? It's, it's a tricky question, Leslie, um, and there are no firm rules of thumb, but typically bad debt is anything like credit card debt, as I was saying, where you couldn't possibly out-earn mm -hmm that rate of interest on any sort of investment. So anytime you're in a, in a form of debt where it's costing you 10% or more to service that debt, that's bad debt. Okay. Um, and then a more gray area would be student loan debt or if you have a home or condo mortgage and you're earning some kind of tax deduction mm -hmm. on that debt, you can actually think of the, the real interest rate on that debt as being somewhat lower than the stated interest rate because you're getting that tax deduction. And so I would put that lower interest rate debt, particularly where you're getting the tax deduction, in the realm of maybe not good debt, but okay debt, debt that you could live with while you're also investing. Well, let's say I have $100 a month or $100 per paycheck to allocate towards saving and paying off debt. How would you, and you mentioned you know, paying off debt would be your priority, how would you allocate that $100? Well, if it is credit card debt, um, I would say I'd probably put most of it toward that debt versus getting into other investments. Mm -hmm. So I would be inclined to put almost 100% mm -hmm. of that $100 per month into the credit card debt. Okay. And then match your 401k if your company matches it. If, if you're your getting a priority. match, yes. Okay. And the emergency fund. Right. It's a lot to think <laughs> about. Um, the other question I had is sometimes when you first sign up for your 401k plan, there's a lot of paperwork involved. The HR rep hands you a lovely folder with lots of prospectus and forms to fill out. How do you decide what funds to invest in, and where do you kind of start you know, winning, winnowing out the information that is relevant to you as an investor? I would start by focusing on what you can safely tune out. Mm -hmm. So one thing you'll be presented with is a whole um, realm of information about recent returns or returns over the past five years, and sometimes people start and finish by looking at returns. Mm -hmm. And so they pick the thing that's returned the most over, say, the past five years, and assume that that's going to be a good place to put their money. That's a terrible way to invest. So if um, you're presented with return information, you need to step beyond that, take a look at some data on the fund, Morningstar.com. Again, I think is a great resource for people looking to research 
the holdings mm -hmm. in their 401k plan. Another thing to think about is rather than just being paralyzed by indecision because you, you might sort of fall into information overload, sure. maybe think about getting started by investing in the target date fund okay. that corresponds with your age range. So you pick the target date that corresponds approximately with your retirement date. So use one of those target date funds, um, which are sort of all-in-one investments as a starting point. And then while you sort all this out and research mm -hmm. individual funds, maybe you can go back in there and refine it, right. but get started by using the target date fund and then get busy getting educated. Sure. Okay, for, so for people who are just starting out, can you explain a little bit what is a target date fund yeah. and how they're um, how they're created, what, what makes a target date fund different than a, a regular mutual fund? So most mutual funds would have a specific focus, so maybe they would invest entirely in stocks, entirely in bonds, entirely in really safe stuff that's mm -hmm. never going to go down a lot but won't go up a lot. So most funds are more specialized. Target date funds are designed to be all-in-one funds, and they're meant to be risk appropriate for people at various life stages. So if you're starting out in your 20s in a target date fund, that fund will be mostly stocks. Mm -hmm. And then as you get closer to retirement date, it will gradually get more conservative okay. and be more in bonds. So the beauty of target date funds is that they help you with that stock bond mix, sure. which is something people struggle with and then they also help move it toward a more conservative mix as you get closer to needing the money. Okay, great. That was helpful. And when you get your 401k statement, they come out quarterly, how do you read that statement or what should you do with that information? Um, you want to be informed about what you're invested in but you don't want to go overboard and be too overwhelmed. How do you manage um, keeping up with what's happening with your 401k but not go overboard with trying to trade too often or make too many big investment decisions? I would focus less on those quarterly statements, Leslie, and, and plan instead to do um, a one a, an annual checkup um, so do a top to bottom checkup once a year. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't spend too much time on a quarterly basis because there again, I think you have a tendency or one has a tendency to get swung around by what is returned most, least. Mm -hmm. This is a laggard because it stunk it up over the past quarter. That's too short term, yep. a time frame. The good news about receiving your 401k statements is that your own contributions are part of what you see there. Mm -hmm. So typically you see this nice steady upward climb and you're not inclined to panic. Sure. So um, that's the good news about receiving those quarterly statements. You probably won't see any huge losses in any one quarter because part of what is pushing that 401k is your own money. Right, your own contributions. Yeah. Good. Well, thank you very much for joining me today, Christine. Thanks, Leslie. Great to be here. I'm Leslie Banks for galsguide.com. Thanks for watching.